Actually, how they met was doing time together. So, anyhow, first of all, uh, where were you born? I was born in New York City. I was born in Manhattan. I was born in Metropolitan Hospital. And uh, you told me a little while ago that you left New York City. How old were you? Um, to the city, left to another borough, or left the city in general? In general. In general, we left the city in 1970, no, uh, 70. That's when I went to Newburgh, New York. So, um, and what was the reason you left? Uh, to avoid the corruption of Brooklyn. In the 70s? Yeah, yeah. yeah you know something? Brooklyn was, Brooklyn was infested with heroin in the 70s. A lot of the crooks were cops. Yeah, a, a lot, but you know, back then they were they were interweaving so good because you didn't have the technology to catch corruption then, so everything was a little easier for them. So when we went up to Newburgh. How was that? Well, Newburgh, if you're looking for corruption, it was paradise because it was the number one city in crime in New York. So my mother took me out of the fire and put me in the frying pan. Open city. Open was, city. Open that city. was. All right, so you told me also that you enlisted in the Navy? Yeah, then on, in 1973. How old were it, you then? Uh, just turning 17, uh, no, 18. Wow. Just turning 18. Well, uh, what made you do that? I, 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 wanted, I really did want to change, I, but, you know, because I was out of control. And, you know, I want to say something that, it, just like a serial killer leaves little tiny, a little s sign so he can get caught because he's looking for a way out of the madness. I was looking for a way out of the madness. So I got into the military and I was able to get into more madness. More madness. Yeah, military was, I mean, when you come on the ship, I, I came across, you get to the plank, they ask you, you, you got to say, um... O A one five two six three or four seaman apprentice Rivera, request requesting uh, permission to come aboard. So the guy looks at you. He says, "Come aboard." So one guy comes up to you all the time and says, "Are you cool?" <laughs> if you say you're cool, you're gonna see everything. And I said I was cool, so I saw everything. That means that you see it all. Once you say you're not cool. They'll leave you alone. They'll never let you see anything. And you could enter a good career in the military. But you're talking about drugs then. Yeah, drugs. Anything sold, black market. I would sell anything. I was buying watches at the Post Exchange for almost nothing and reselling them. Um, you told me also that, what kind of ship were you on? I was on the Fox, the USS Malsey Fox, DD-10, the 829 out of Norfolk, Virginia. What kind of ship was it? It was a destroyer, DD Tender. So you, you were off the coast of Vietnam? Then we went off the coast of Vietnam. Uh, did you actually fire in support of the ground troops? Yeah, we, we did very little firing. Uh, we were on a lot of standby, and uh, there was a lot of patrolling, but not too much firing. And it wouldn't take, I was always look uh, volunteering to fire because to get a shot, you know, use the, the that was only uh, designated for small arms. They wouldn't trust me with anything bigger than that. Interesting thing is when I was there, uh, we had the New Jersey firing in support of us. Yeah. And the destroyers too. Yeah. That's something. We did very little firing. We didn't, there were some guys that were full active. The, the Fox was pulled out. She had a history, but then... Uh, it was more relaxed, and she was uh, um, just reconnaissance. My time in 66 um, uh, and 67, we didn't have any drug problem. Where I wasn't with the Marines, I was with, not at all. 
Maybe you didn't see it, but you know, for it not to be there. I mean, them guys were, you know, them guys were capital punishment when it came to drugs, man. Them guys, them guys were out of control. You talking about heroin too? Uh, no, it was a lot of pot and LSD. Cause don't forget, we're talking the '70s. Yeah. I mean, we were dropping acid like aspirin. You know, I was knocking out seven hits of acid How, easy. Did you did you get out with an honorable discharge? No, they gave me a general under other than honorable condition because I was I was doing a lot of black market and smuggling. So so, but you finished you finished two. Yeah years. yeah, but then after that they they were upset. They they were well, tired of me. They were tired of me. You know, usually when you go in the military and you come out, you you got to step up. They call it. It wasn't, right? No, no, it, it, I got to step down. Cause, step down. Yeah. But they, uh, you know, they, they raided the ship, and, you know, my, I, I was young. I was uh, 18 then, or 19, and buck wild out of Brooklyn, no self-control, always looking for a dollar. I was dropped dead handsome, and, you know, I was, like, hyperactive. So anytime them guys called me in for anything, Paul Rivera was what they would always say, you know, and I was down for anything. Well, I, th I think a lot of people in the 70s, that was their experience in the services because things were getting really uh, bad. They were drafting people, and the, these people knew that we were pulling out. So it was a really difficult situation. Morale, drugs. The morale was low, very low. Yeah. All right, so you come out of the military... And what do you do? Uh, I didn't come out the military. I was snatched out of the military because while on leave, we did a big stick up in the Bronx. And I got arrested um, on Sedgwick was the police station they first took me to. And sometimes I contract in a building very close to it. Next to 1600 is the building where rap was born. And uh, the, after that, I received seven years you were still in the Navy? Yes, I was still in the Navy. Uh, just before my tour and my 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 discharge was over, what, I what caught the What were you trying up. to rob? Oh, we were trying to do a payroll, a deposit. It was large. I was they, 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 I was overcame with the greed. It was a lot of money. Uh, 321000 back in those days was a lot of money. Um, How did you get caught? Easy. You know, it was easy to get caught. I mean, they were all over us. You know, they... they they were on us. They were. They came at too the fast. Of, at the scene of the crime. Uh, three blocks away from the scene of the crime. Pulled you over? No, they didn't pull us over. We, we, we ran into some difficulties, and we were leaving through some buildings. So we stopped for a minute, and right there they came at us. They came strong. Were they uh, some anti? I mean, some are they called anti-crime cops? No, it was just regular police officers. The guys in blue. I mean, I, you must have taken a plea, right? Yeah, I took a plea, but all the money wasn't reported. You know, the, the amount we took isn't the amount that was reported. They didn't recover all the money. They recovered all of it, okay, but all yeah. of it didn't get turned in. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. They recovered all the money that you took, but it yeah. wasn't reported. Yeah, all of the, uh, and you remember the NAC commission then, the big, uh, uh, the NAC commission with the big corruption that was taking place, Roger Phillip and all that. And they, they was, it, there was no technology. That was pretty common, you know. Yeah. They would recover drugs and not, and, uh, not uh, voucher all the drugs. They keep so much You know how many guys I did time with that were complaining that they got caught with 50 bricks, kilos, and only 10 got turned in? I used to ask them, you want them to give you the other 40 back? <laughs> what are you complaining about? You know, they... <laughs> Uh, I got a lot of stories about the 70s, the corruption. It, it was incredible. Well, now technology is going to keep some of that in check. So the technology today will keep some of the corruption in check. Especially if they wear body cams all the time. When, yeah, when they, yeah. When they come up to a civilian, that's the, the best thing. All right. So you, yeah. you get seven years. Did you do the seven years? No, out of seven, I did three. I was released in May... 18, 19, 19, 1978. And that, when you did that time, you met Jack, Jackie? No, Jackie at that time was breaking bigger rocks up in the north. 
Well, how did you meet Jackie? Uh, I met Jackie in my third prison tour. <laughs> Your third? <laughs> I, I, I couldn't get enough of that. Listen, greed is, I, I've always had a problem with greed. And people have used me because of that. Because if, if the number was good, you can wake me up at any time of the morning. I always told people, you can call, you can call me anything if you're going to invite me to do a heist. You know, if you, we're going to get money, you can, you can call me any name you want, as long as you're calling me to get money. Right. And they knew that was my weak spot, you know. So I used to like to dress good. I used to like to spend money. So at that time, I went to... Uh, Talking about your second time? The second time, I went to Massachusetts. I caught 35 years, uh, five times, seven, uh, seven times running concurrent, which is five, 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 five. Uh, I went to Walpole, uh, then I, which is the best prison in the world. It's called uh, The Experiment, where Malcolm X was at. Uh, the Experiment gave you anything you wanted. This is they in had, Massachusetts. Yeah, they, you could have a business there. You can run your own business. Don't think you're going to, no, not there. They run it disciplined. You can make money. You can dress, jeans. You could, but you will do the time. And the place was an honor, an honor prison. But you got 35 years. Yeah, but it was all, it was running concurrent in fives. So you're only doing five. Because each oh, five oh. Is, is on top of the other five. Oh, boy, you caught a break. Uh, Run, getting everything concurrent. Yeah, it was a break, but you know they they it was illegal search and seizure because the police stopped me without a warrant, and I had a gun on my lap. So then after they did that, they found out I had another warrant for an armed robbery, and I had another warrant for the parole in New York. So they put everything together. The parole in New York was dismissed. The what went together was the assault, um, robbery, attempted armed robbery. Discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a house, possession of a weapon, and attempted kidnap. So it those were like a one-man crime. No, I had, I had people with me. I didn't. I never went in alone. I'm not. Right. I'm not okay. brave. Now your third bit. The third bit was murder. What? Murder was the third bit, but murder was common in the drug game. No, I don't want you to get. You know, murder was common if, if it's in the drug game. I know that. It was people that weren't legal. Okay, so they, I'm not saying it's all right to kill them or kill anybody. But when you're begging for the murder, you know, it's different. Them guys just did things that were totally against the game. All right, wait, so you got arrested for a murder? I went to Mexico City. I lived in Mexico. I was uh, living in the military base in the federal district of Mexico, then the city falls down. There's an earthquake. So I get back on a bus and I shoot north. I come back across the border. I head back to the Bronx to open up shop again in 85. And right there, I got set up. I got arrested in the Grand Concourse. For a murder committed where? In Newburgh. Wait. Newburgh. And... Uh Took a plea on that one too. No, we went to trial. And acquitted. No, I went to trial and I pleaded self-defense. So, did it work? No, I did. Well, I got thirty years. You got three years? Thirty. Thirty. That's why I did time with Jackie. That's why I was able to have the pleasure of meeting <laughs> Jackie Ruzaz, who introduced me to you. <laughs> huh? You know, me and Jackie are the same age. Yeah. But uh, we we have we know some people in common. Uh, the common thing is doing time. You know. All right. Um, so you got to thirty years, mm -hmm. thirty to life. Yeah. And how much did you do of that? I did thirty. You did thirty years. I did thirty. I went in eighty-five, almost thirty. I did twenty-seven. Went in eighty-five, and came out two thousand, uh, two thousand twelve. And. All right. Now, where are you living now? I'm living in the Bronx. I understand you have your own business. Yeah, uh, it's a construction. It's um, bathrooms and kitchens. But I'm even trying to get into the new materials now, the new technology uh, that Italy is offering, walls that you touch, color changes, that type of stuff. I'm, I like what I do now. So you came out and said 2012? 2012. Are you still on parole? No, I was off parole. 
they made me, they extended the probationary parole discharging period. Guys got off at three, they made me do five. Um, this is off the topic, really, but uh, I really like Jackie. I just met him recently. He walked up to me and we started talking, and I realized that this guy is a serious person and knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, what was his reputation in, in the... Uh, now, in prison, he was... It, 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 I, there's a lot of men I don't respect. You know, because I, I'm not impressed by what you did, because I've done a lot. But uh, Jackie was always a, a, a very impressive person, because to be able to keep your integrity in a place like that, you have to have real integrity. And Jackie was, Jackie had, was very respected. Uh, Jackie was a real criminal. I mean, not a bad, uh, in a bad way. He was real. One day, we go into the showers, and the police says, when you go into the shower, lock the shower behind you. So Jackie says, I'm not closing the shower. I'm not incarcerating myself. It's your job to incarcerate me. But I said, Jackie, you know, relax. I'll close the shower. He said, if you want to close it, you can close it. But I'm not closed. I said, I'll close the shower. Jackie, you know, I didn't want him to get in trouble. Keeping Jackie out of trouble was a job. And like these young guys that were tough, Jackie will tell any young guy, listen, we can go in my cell for five minutes, you know, because Jackie had a good knuckle game. He was an amateur uh, boxer. Yeah, he was, he, he knocked something and, out uh, real quick. I, I know that, um, I, know, I know about his case, it's incredible, but the bottom line is he killed a cop, even though he didn't intend to kill him. Wait a minute, it, 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 you know... I know, look, he, 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 he defended himself. I know. I'm because saying. he told the officer, don't reach for your gun. He reached for his gun. And the officer would have reached for that deadly physical force. He, it, Jackie's life would have been, if I'm, in a, if I'm doing something. I was about to say that he was actually acquitted of the murder of the police officer. But he was found guilty, I think, of felony murder. So he yes. was facing murder one. And uh, it's a great story, but. Uh, he's out, and he's a character. Yeah, I'm glad he's out, you know. All right, listen, now, <laughs> this is great, this is great. All right, there came a time, when did you start doing? I've been doing art all my life. I've been distracted from it all my life, too. You see what I'm trying to say? I wanted to get back to it. So I thank God that I was given the opportunity to be confined into a place where I can focus on what I really like to do. So I'm not one of those guys that did time. I want to always bring that to the point. I was so on fire by discovering my talents and fertilizing them, in harvesting them in prison, that I didn't have time to focus on time. I didn't care about prison. Prison became totally oblivious, you know? I was too busy to, uh, creating some art and some of the hardest techniques in the world. Glaze is the hardest technique. And I perfected glaze and I studied. I studied Rembrandt, Picasso, Van Gogh. And I, I studied these guys. I went into what they did. You mean on your own or they were giving glaze? No, they wasn't. I was rejected from some of the classes. So I did it all on my own. All on your own. And um, so when did you start this? What, what? I, start, I got back into it. In 85, when I got arrested. Um, were, were any of these painted while you were in prison? All of them were created 20 years ago. That one is uh, uh, November 25th, 2009. So all of these were... Yeah, all this is prison work. All this. This is, uh, this is, uh, this one, no, it was, yeah, uh, 2009 also. Um... That was later. That was during my blue period. Like Picasso had a blue period. That's when he did Watnica. And then this one here is, um, I think this one is uh, 2000. This is incredible that you, you were able to do this while you're doing time. And yet, what about, I mean, how do you get the, the painting supplies and everything? I bought uh, the five. I used to like good paint. I don't want to say the color. I'm not going to advertise for them. But I use some of the uh, best pigments uh, that I can buy. I bought great. I, I didn't spare no expense in the, the, the material. 
you can order uh, or through catalogs. It comes into the hobby shop. Some jails were trying to fade it out. They didn't want you to have anything that, what, you know. Uh, you just said something about a glaze. What, what did that? A mean? glaze technique is when you start using paints that's transparent and you build up the coatings so light can illuminate through it. That's called luminosity. That's what gives it the richness. Van Gogh did that. You know, all them guys did that. So what is, is it acrylic, oil? Oil and, and waxes, medium, varnishes. You mix them together so you can give the paint. You can thin it out, but maintain it uh, 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 flexible as a vehicle, transparent, and longer lasting. Wait a minute, you're saying that there's many coats? On one? 130 coats of paint, and this one has like 80 coats of very thin paint, very thin. Is it, I, I, I'm, I'm not into That's it. what you see, the light? The light, the light is, yeah. the, you're trying to achieve that light by using the original bottom canvas color. So you try not to put nothing on there. It's like a watercolor technique that you preserve the light from the surface, the original surface. It does look like, well, that looks like watercolor. And these look like acrylic, really. Um, I wish I could do stuff like that with acrylic where it can dry in 15 minutes. Uh, this, this technique, this, I mean, is, is this something common or something? Van Gogh, all them guys were using it back in the days. That's how they did human faces that the color looked so rich without looking um, as animated like cartoon because it's not pastel. It's actually thin coatings, building the thin coatings. Say back in the day, what day are you talking about? Oh, we're talking Van Gogh. We're talking Rembrandt. We're talking hundreds of years ago. Michelangelo, all those guys used glaze techniques. Yeah, those masters were, those were the guys that set precedence to this. I never realized that, they, that a painting would incorporate so many. Uh, yeah, so that's why things. I don't sell my work. I really collect it, and if I let something go, it's to a collector. How do you, uh, how do you like market these things? I try not to. Uh, I promote it, but I don't market it. You know, uh, it markets itself by. You know, other people say, well, listen, that painting could be worth this much according to the notoriety, the technique, the size. You know, uh, I leave that to... Has, it, have, has anybody compared you to any current artist or... Uh, Picasso. Have no, not Picasso. Uh, uh, some Picasso because, you know, the flexibility, but really uh, Dali. Dali, Salvatore Dali. Yeah. Well, I would... I this, is ex this is... Surrealism, like he he did surrealism. Well, I know those two artists, and I would say the same thing. It's incredible. Uh, are you painting now? Yes, now I'm working on a piece, uh, 45 by 90. It's taking up a lot of my living room, too. What about uh, what about your family life? Are you by yourself, or? Yeah, I'm single, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a dog? And I have a dog. Look at that. I, I, at me. last, I have a dog. I came home to own a dog. BB. Right, BB? Right? You're good? Take it easy. Relax. I'm not inviting you. Relax. She gets out of control. All right. We're going to, uh, we've got a few minutes, and then we're going to go into another topic. Um, so you support yourself by doing? My construction. Construction. And you, what, what kind of construction? Bathrooms and kitchens. I like to remodel with modern equipment. I, it's like art. I like to see the end product, how pretty I can and precise I can put Say together. Say if you wanted to do a kitchen. Yeah. Beginning to end. Yeah. A big kitchen, how much would it cost? A big kitchen? Um, the talking. Half the size of this room. Oh, uh, this is an easy $48,000. $48,000. That's not that much, really. Depending on the appliances. I've seen some people go up to 250000 yeah, yeah. with German appliances. Everything flown from Germany. That's, that's for lofts. And, and uh, what, what would you use, like, say, for um, uh, the floor or a ta table? Like oh, it depends. The floors can be anywhere from epoxy to marble. Yeah. A lot of people don't like do marble because like it's soft. I like, well, they got a Mario Romano now from Italy is producing some of the most modern, finest 
He, this guy's incredible. The walls, you can touch them. They change color. Uh, it's incredible. Mario Romano. Romero. Rome, Mario Romero from Italy. This guy's incredible. I'm flying to L.A. to see if... Uh, I'm flying to L.A. to see if uh, I can be a New York installer for him. When, when did you start doing this, the construction thing? Oh, well, in prison I was involved in construction. But in prison, you can do it any kind of way. You can mess up the place. You don't even have to calculate. This is Work a, in prison is sloppy. Were you ever put in solitary? Yeah, I was a few times. You know, we, we have problems. Uh, from what I heard about solitary, I mean, some people would go crazy in solitary. Yeah, well, they got a system. They started using a system that when the nurse goes to your uh, door, if you're going crazy, insane, it, it let them out. They take you out? They take you out, and they take you up to the uh, S, uh, to the medical ward, and they start giving you medication till they turn you into a zombie. You know, you just walk around in a daze. They just pump you up with uh, all types of, you know, the high doses of medication. They, that's it. Uh, when uh, yourself, did you, were you by yourself or with another prisoner? Well, the cells in, in, in those maxes uh, were by myself for the longer part of my prison incarceration. Then later on, they started using two-man cells. I did that very little. Very little. It's very discomfortable, that type of space with another person. And how big was your cell, your feet? How wide and how long? Oh, it was 8 by 10. How did you find that? It's horrible, trying to get all these paintings done. and 8 by 10, that's the size of a, a closet. Well, that's the closet. size of the Ramada N where I was at. Yeah, a walk-in closet or a pantry. No, that's pretty big once you've been in it for a bunch of years. Uh, and uh, all right, we're just about to end in a few seconds. We're going to take up an, a serious topic when we start again. Okay. All right. We're done. That was incredible. All right. Oh.